Thanks, everybody. So after the last panel, um, who's who's convinced about quantum advantage? It's coming. Everybody's good. You can put up your hands. Are you convinced? Who's got a little bit of incredulity? Not sure. So our approach at Q-Control is to show and not tell. And so I'm extremely excited to tell you that, frankly, much of this discussion about quantum advantage and when it's going to come and is it going to come, it's already answered. Quantum advantage has already been achieved. Now, it has been achieved in an area that is adjacent to the computing applications that we were just talking about. I want to tell you about the work that we have done in quantum assured navigation. I want to give you insights into the real challenges that are being solved today with quantum technology. And at the end, I want to give you just one more thing that's extremely exciting and is coming in the near term. So if you're not familiar with Q-Control, we're a business that has been focused for the last eight years of our existence on building new forms of AI-powered infrastructure software to make quantum hardware better. In the area of quantum computing, we build performance management infrastructure software. We make the software that makes the hardware thousands of times better. We're very widely used across the community. Many of you will have heard about the recent DARPA quantum benchmarking initiative. 50% of the recipients of contracts under that are already customers or users of our software. But in parallel, we also have focused on how this idea that AI-powered software can make quantum hardware better, we've focused on how that can be applied in quantum sensing. And we've developed a new capability that we call software ruggedized quantum sensing using software to combat all of the failures that have limited the uptake of this technology in real-world applications. Here we work with major defense primes, with SMEs, and the like. It's this area that I want to tell you about today. And we were very excited that only two weeks ago, we had an announcement that really shook things up in the sector, because we were able to show, and we were grateful, I mean, as a native New Yorker, it's always nice to have something in Times Square, we were able to show that we could actually achieve quantum advantage. We could do something better with a quantum technology than the best conventional alternative. The application is navigation. Now, many of you will have seen this article from a couple of years ago, a year, a year or so ago, in the New York Times, identifying that GPS has become vulnerable. Now, all of us absolutely rely on this. If you use Google Maps, if you used Waze, if you used Uber, you're always leveraging GPS. It's this kind of invisible capability that powers almost everything we do on a daily basis. But it has become a target of both economic and strategic warfare. And we know that economically, analyses in the UK have shown this is a billion pound per day vulnerability for a short-term outage. Obviously, the impacts can be much, much bigger if this is a long-term outage. Now, regrettably, things are getting worse, not better. This is a map from roughly two weeks ago when I submitted my slides for this talk. It's a real-time map of data coming from commercial aircraft. This is, for any of the experts in the room, the ADS-B system. Automatically, the aircraft reports if something goes wrong. And one of the things that it reports is GPS has been denied. Somebody is actively interfering with GPS. Now this map, if you can't see, spans Europe on the left, Japan on the right. Areas of red indicate high incidences of active GPS denial automatically re relayed by commercial aircraft. Now you'll note there's nothing over Ukraine because there's no commercial aircraft flying over Ukraine right now. But this looks really very much like a new electronic iron curtain that is separating Europe from the East. Now, of course, the objectives are different. It's not keeping things inside on one side of the iron curtain. But if you look closely enough, and if you fly a lot like I do, you will see that it is the key flight paths between Europe and Asia that are all suffering major GPS denial around the Black Sea, around Turkey, around Northern Iraq, around Iran. You also see it in the Baltic states. This is a major vulnerability. And pilots recognize it. We engage directly with commercial airline pilots. 70% of them said that suffering GPS denial, the risk of it, 
is something that's of very high or extreme concern. And they offer comments like, when you're clearing alarms from jamming, those few minutes require 100% of your attention. Minutes feel like hours. You have no capacity to deal with anything else. So I'm sorry, because I know many of you are getting on an aircraft after this event. But it's so important to understand how significant this problem is as a matter not only of operational efficiency, but of flight safety. We need new forms of alternative navigation. And many of you will know that there actually are such backups to GPS already. There are things like inertial navigation systems of great interest recently have been visual navigation systems that use cameras on drones, for instance, to look at the terrain. These all do have shortcomings, though. And because of those shortcomings, there's been a huge drive to develop new forms of alternative navigation solutions. Alternative navigation solutions that work anywhere and under any conditions. As a simple example, if you're using a visual terrain matching system, it doesn't work if it's dark. It doesn't work if it's cloudy. It doesn't work if there's smoke screen. So there's a huge interest in building new backups. And in order to go forward, we often have to look backwards. The approach that we've been pursuing is a bit like orienteering but with a quantum twist. Now, anybody who's been involved in the scouts or adjacent to the scouts knows orienteering, maybe just like the outdoors. You're given a map, and then you have your eyes as sensors, and you have to look around, identify landmarks. There's a hill, there's a valley, there's a river. And with what you see, identify where you are on the map. You position fix. And then you try to navigate to a target destination. We want to do something similar. But that visual navigation doesn't work when it's nighttime. It doesn't work when it's cloudy. We need something that you can see irrespective of time of day or conditions. And fortunately, Earth's very fingerprint gives us things that we can see if we have the right set of eyes. Earth's crust has tiny little variations in gravity and magnetic fields. Earth's magnetic field doesn't just point north. It has little tiny bumps and wiggles that are uniquely linked to specific locations. And the same is true in gravity. This is a unique fingerprint. If we have the right set of eyes, we can detect this. And this is what quantum sensing gives us, using quantum systems to detect the world instead of processing and computing information. Now, these kinds of technologies using maps of Earth's magnetic or, ge or gravimetric fields have been studied for years, but they have not been in broad deployment. And that's because the sets of eyes we've had have not been very good. What we have learned is that it appears only quantum sensors give the combination of sensitivity, the ability to measure very small signatures, and stability, consistency in the output without the need to stop and recalibrate, necessary in order to allow geophysical position fixing. Only quantum sensing can do this. So this is what we got into. And we got into it because the complement is the map. If you look at critical areas, this is Ukraine in the middle, and you can again see the GPS jamming incidents around the Black Sea, around Poland, etc. In the areas of operation, that matter for economic reasons, that matter for strategic reasons. We also have complementary maps that are available and that have been built over decades of the geophysical features coming from Earth's crust. These are globally available. There's obviously much room for improvement. We've seen Google Maps improve from MapQuest 20 years ago based on demand, and we'll see the same here. But the starting point is they exist. The problem is the same as in quantum computing. It's interference, it's noise. If you try to put a quantum magnetometer that is extraordinarily sensitive on an airplane that's made of metal and flies through Earth's magnetic field, it is overwhelmed by interference, usually a 100 or a 1,000 times larger than the actual geophysical signal you're trying to measure. This is what we focused on, solving this problem with software, as we do in quantum computing. We took a completely different approach that, to use an analogy that came up in the last setting, is very popular in our sector, it's noise-canceling headphones. We built a totally new approach to physics-based denoising. It uses a combination of physical insight and AI machine learning technologies 
such that in combination they give better performance than anything that's previously been available. It requires 15 times less data training than the best published alternative. It works instantly. You turn it on and it learns what it needs to in flight. It doesn't need pre-training. It doesn't need a huge amount of data collection. It doesn't need recalibration when you change where passengers are sitting. It also doesn't need the thing that has really blocked this kind of navigational backup from being widely deployed. It doesn't need in-flight calibration maneuvers. The technologies that have existed to date require that if an aircraft takes off and tries to do magnetic navigation, it has to take off and then fly in a square for 10 minutes, doing all sorts of banks and other maneuvers, and then it can go on its mission. Imagine you were trying to do that every time you took off from Dubai or from Heathrow. It's an untenable approach. We got rid of that. And we combine it with a totally new magnetometer that we have built. And you'll note here that this is really quite small. We think about quantum things being enormous filling rooms. That's an Australian 50 cent coin. It's a little bit bigger than a quarter. The device is roughly the size of your finger. That's the whole thing. That's the entire quantum sensor. It's small enough to be deployed on small scale autonomous systems like UAVs, but it's good enough. It measures for the experts in the femto Tesla per root Hertz regime to be deployed for critical applications in commercial aviation. And of course, our approach is to show, not to tell. So we put it on an airplane. We flew a system that for the experts, again, was triple redundant. We had all sorts of other backups. We tested all sorts of sensors, but we flew for 27 hours in total, completely autonomous operation. There's no human doing a remote in internet to try and control the thing. It's just operating. We flew from ground level to 19,000 feet, which is the ceiling of this aircraft. We did all sorts of funky dynamic maneuvers. We even did something that you can't do with any of the existing magnetic navigation solutions. We turned on autopilot. Autopilot makes so much interference that it breaks the other magnet systems. We turned it on. We flew near electrical storms. And the short of it is, it worked. In this animation, you can see in white, the actual ground truth. In purple, the Q-Control magnetic navigation solution positioning. And in red, the conventional GPS backup. The conventional backup is called an INS, an inertial navigation system. There's one on every airplane, on every ship. And over the course of this 720 kilometer journey, the error gradually accumulated with the inertial navigation system. But with our approach, the position stayed very close to the actual ground truth given to us by GPS in this case. Now, what we published was a 50 times advantage. Since then, we've analyzed more flight data. And then now, the maximum performance we've achieved is almost a hundred times better positioning uncertainty or positioning accuracy than the best like-for-like -like GPS alternative. A hundred times better quantum advantage with this solution. This is now being commercially deployed. Ironstone Opal, through our partnership with Airbus, is now getting ready for flight trials on commercial aircraft. It's been designed to be fully integrable with modern avionics systems and is being delivered as an electronic flight bag application, allowing us to shortcut the regulatory regime. This is a new GPS backup we are bringing to commercial aviation right now. Since we made the announcement on April 14th, we've had over 200 inbound requests for purchase. First deliveries will start in the beginning of 26. But it's not only commercial aviation, we're also delivering this in autonomous systems for tactical drones, delivering a new form of GPS backup that enables missions in places that have previously been completely inaccessible, like over water, at night, and the like. But I promised you one more thing. What I've told you about so far have been the airborne trials, and most recently also ground-based trials of the magnetic navigation sol solution that gave us performance a hundred times better than the best GPS backup that exists today. Magnetic navigation is not perfect. There is no magic pudding in this world. There are always limits. One limit is it doesn't work great in some maritime settings close to the Earth's sur surface, close to the ocean surface. There, there's another kind of geo physical footprint we can look at, or fingerprint we can look at, that comes from Earth's gravity. 
And we're very excited that we're also going to be releasing a variant of Ironstone Opal focused on the maritime sector based on gravitational map matching, where our gravitational system, which is the world's smallest to date, actually has validated that it can deliver performance in motion fit for maritime map matching. We're very excited to be bringing that forward very soon. I'll leave you with this idea. There's a huge amount of interest. There's a huge amount of investment. There's a huge amount of activity in quantum assured navigation. This is the only system that has ever worked. It is the only system that has ever outperformed its classical alternative. And we are absolutely thrilled to bring it forward and to share it with you today. So please reach out. We're at booth 19. Look forward to speaking with you again. Thank you.